Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Who's awake? I'm waking up. <laughs> Actually, you're probably very awake. Oh, I'm very awake. I've been up since three. What? <laughs> That's what I say. I have done all the things. <laughs> oh my gosh. How are you today, Sarah? I am good. I have not been up since three. I have the yawns. I could use a second cup of coffee, but I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> How about you guys? How you doing? We're pretty good. We're here in the Bay Area. The weather is cooling down. It's Ooh. feeling like fall as it mm. becomes uh, December becomes winter. Yeah. Um, but it's nice. it's nice. It's nice. Yeah. These past days have been like super clear and beautiful. It's like perfect weather. Yeah. It is finally raining here. I know that like most people would love the, the beautiful weather, but we have been in such a drought. So to wake up this morning, the pouring down rain was very exciting. And so everybody on on my little corner of the world woke up to, to wetness, which was really, really needed. So I don't mind that it's cloudy and gloomy outside and soaking wet. I don't really have anywhere to go, so I can enjoy it <laughs> from the inside and, and not worry about it. But yeah, we really needed some rain. So this was this was very, very unexpected and a, a good a good weather day oddly for rain it's a uh, good weather day i've still been in the mood to open my window a bit at night mm -hmm. just but the air is so much cooler now yeah so i definitely i had like five blankets on my bed last night <laughs> and i was just like hibernating <laughs> it was, i like did not want to leave my nest this morning <laughs> meanwhile i'm chaotically texting him are you awake <laughs> Get up already. I don't want to be away. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. We are indeed here for some beating today. Not just chit chatting, although we will be chit chatting all day long. <laughs> I'm Sam with Sam's Beach Chef. We've also got Shira in the house. Shira's a long time, initially just customer of the shop, but now so much more. <laughs> um, I feel very lucky to get to work with Shira now Aww. at the shop, even though she already has a, her own full-time job as a pro assistant vice principal. She still manages to find some time to help us out at the shop. <laughs> you all know Sarah. That's me. <laughs> I'm here. I'm here. Hi, everybody. Welcome in. It is so good to see everybody. I am really excited for today's show. Um, we are going through Sam's bead box for the month of November, and it is a gorgeous box. Now, I know a lot of you have already seen the unboxings for it, but we do it anyway, um, just because Sam <laughs> Sam put it but right before the like, He likes to get my thoughts on the box, which I think is funny because I always love the box. Like, what what do you need to I know? Need to know? I what love you think it. Of it. <laughs> <laughs> so One of us. That's what we're going to do. We're going to go through the box. We're going to talk about the box. Sam's going to give us all of the lowdown about the box because I don't have the little card for this one. So I need oh. the, I need the inspiration and, and the whole bit. So I'm going to, I'm going to let you uh, lead us in all of that. And then if we've got time, well, I mean, we'll have time. We're going to put together a pendant. This is not a hard pendant. I um I will be completely honest with you. When I was putting this pendant together, I actually had like 70 other things going on. And I was like, you know what? I just want to focus on the beautiful beads instead of getting like into some crazy design. So I picked out some of my favorite things from the box and really featured those. And then just put it with a piece of leather just to kind of show that, you know, you don't always have to do like a full on necklace or a bracelet to really appreciate the beauty that is in the box. So um, though this pendant is not anything super hard, it's still to me. I I I really, I don't know. I thought it was a it was a, a beautiful piece that you could use in a lot of different ways. So um, that was kind of my goal for the project today. But the, we the main focus, of course, is the beads. So let's get beady. Oops, Ooh, beady. All right, let me let me flip around my camera here, and we can find out what Sarah's faves of this month's box are. Yeah. Let's see how quickly I can do it. Voila. Ooh la la. All righty, we got we got some beads here, folks. We have all the beads from the November Sam's Bead Box, which is the subscription box of Sam's Bead Shop. Sarah has a code, by the way. Uh, if you use code Sarah, S-A-R-A, -A, you can get $5 off your very first 
uh, Sam's Bead Box at samsbeadbox.com. But we also sell uh, the X, like once the box has been released, you can get this on our main website, samspeedshop.com. So shall we take a look? Shall we start with the strand, Sarah? So the- Yes, yes, you yes. Didn't yes. Get the, you don't have the, you don't have the answer, so let me catch you up a little bit. Okay. So all of the inspiration of this Mukai box, of course, came from the wonderful Jasper that is Mukai Jasper from Australia. And Rachel and I thought it just had such a nice harvest feel. I thought it was like perfect for this month. So we, we really drew the main colors from Mukite, those purples, your yellows, your reds, for, and sometimes like, like the casual cream tone as well from the Mukite too, and pulled that into our check glass. We even like pulled out some more of the red of the Mukite through other stones like red mm -hmm. jasper. And that's kind of how this whole box came together. It was all about color blending mm -hmm. and feeling just like those nice like traditions that we many of us have at this time of year through all this, these warm tones. Um, we talked about and then sort of about going to this local farm to like pick our pumpkins and go to the corn maze and churn butter and just like yeah. all these things that we associated with this time of year um, through a very harvesty, lovely box. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. And I'm such a fan of Mukite. So the fact that that is like the main color inspiration for this box, like it was already going to be a winner with me even before I saw it. I just knew because Mukite is, I always say Mukite. I can't help myself. <laughs> but it's so pretty. It really, it's like, I don't really know how to explain it, but how, what's, how's the way to put this? Like, first of all, tell me, Sam, do you know how, how it is that Mukite comes to be what it is? I actually like, don't really. Yes. But Shira does. Uh, okay. I read a little bit about it and it's like millions of years old. It's from the remains of like a, um, some sort of, prehistoric creature that over time is just kind of sifted down into the layers and the layers have built up and changed it into this amazing, amazing Jasper. Wow. It was a really fascinating story. So the colors of Mukai are actually what they are. Is that right? Oh, that absolutely. is correct. Yeah, this, yes. is a, this is a natural stone. So that's, I think that's what the most intriguing part is to me because nature put together a color palette that, you know what I mean? Like just, nature just put together the most beautiful color palette. We didn't even have to do anything except just experience no. it ourselves, which- mm -hmm. It comes in this blend, which is why it's so so fun to get to play with. So we really tried to replicate that through some of our selections. So this is our melon selection from the box. You can see where we pulled in our colors from. So pretty, so, so pretty. So these are our uh, Dahlia coins. Well, those are some of my favorites. Copper. Mine too. I love these. So beautiful. I'm obsessed with that. This is a new shape for the box. If I can get these baggies open. The ornate olive in the lavender amethyst with that mm. gold finish. So pretty too. Oh, decorative olive shape, I think, is really nice. I've used most of the beads from the box at this point in what I've made. So I love that. We really tried to lean in some of the purple, yeah. which is a more yeah. rare tone. Like you'll see more hints of it in it in the Mukai, but it's a more rare tone in Mukai. We definitely still want to lean into it with some of our purples. So here are four of our purple selections here. We did some mm -hmm. melon drops, new mini tulips, some drooks, and some English cuts. And because we've got to custom order all these beads we got to match it so you can see these two in the middle are actually the same purple stone finish yeah and these two are a purple silk here and really lets us just blend the tones really nicely for the box yeah they're so there's just so pretty we went for some mixed strands this month so these are some glasses or like the beads themselves have different glasses mixed together and then we put 
multiple different types on one strand. Yeah. I'm just curious. So I, what, what, I mean, which, which were some of the Sarah faves this month? So <laughs> some of my favorites were the, um, the Dahlia coins. And then mm -hmm. I love both of the mixed strands, but the, the strand that has the more purple in it, this one yes. right here, I, I love, 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 love this strand. That's one of my, that's one of my favorites for sure. There's something about it. I don't know what it is, but I want to just, I just want to restring it. You know what I mean? And just make it a bracelet, like maybe pop okay. a couple of spacers in there, but I really think that it's just a beautiful strand all by itself. Like that was the other strand is really pretty too, but I'm more drawn to the purple for some reason, but I think Fair either enough. one of them would look beautiful. Just simply restrung because they're so beautiful. Like you, you did, you did, you always do good. I don't need to tell you that. You Aww, did good. Thank you, Sarah. <laughs> Here's the last of our purples here. We did a mix of different purple leaves. Oh, and you know, I love those. Love <laughs> a leaf always. My, my personal favorite were these, this pair where this was a super limited find. So everyone only got these two pieces and we didn't have any extras. Yeah, I love so it. Like, so it's like this is probably the most specialty in the box that we scored these. They're probably vintage, honestly. They're they're really cool. And then let's see, we got some hematite cube month because you can't ever go wrong. Exactly. Yep. So pretty. For our metal selections, we went with all Greek metals. We still have some months upcoming that have like some months throughout next year, we'd still have some tier cast that we pre-ordered for next year because we did not want to be not have any tier cast next year. But we also still like occasionally doing some Greek medals because we can get some different designs. And we really like the feel of these for this month. Yeah. Um, probably my this absolute component. favorite. <laughs> yep. That is my favorite component in the box. That is that's probably my favorite thing in the box. Is that, really? that one? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. I've only had one of these one other time. I had it in, um, I think it was in a, like a, a, a bright copper. And Danielle had given it to me just randomly. And I don't even know where she got it from. It was one of my very favorite things. I love it. There's something so different about it. You don't see anything else like it. I think it's awesome. You can use it in a million different ways. Yeah, we did, yeah. We did stream ages ago where I had a green patina version of it. Yeah. I used three pieces of them linked together. Oh, yeah, yeah. I remember Ooh. that. I remember. Um, and it makes a great bracelet. So we have this in multiple finishes available if you guys want to pick those up. A foliage charm and these really fun fan chandeliers as well. So a lot to play with with the metals this month. And we always go for high quality metals. That's why I don't see like a ton of metals each month. It's because nice metals cost more. Yeah. And we really prioritize having metals that, that come from sources we really trust with really good uh like metal contents that we feel good about presenting is very important to us shara's got more beads for us <laughs> vocals we've got um what i see as a snake head yeah and what shara sees as a vase <gasps> you're right <laughs> what see? <laughs> i see it too oh my goodness <laughs> look at that. It's like it's a cute little snakey. <laughs> Any snake fans? <laughs> I think he's <laughs> fabulous. <laughs> We've got a nice big crystal. This is a fire polished turbine here. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. I love this one. It's like yeah, me too. Mm -hmm. It's like a treasure. For our mm -hmm. glorious main focal, we have these custom made for us. <laughs> Wait, mine's stuck in the bag. <laughs> uh, a red jasper carved maple leaf. So pretty. Oh, I love how these came out. Mm -hmm. and it's They're kind beautiful. Of it, 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 it's, yeah. it's a big pendant. <laughs> <laughs> so pretty. I'm curious your ideas for that one, Sarah. Oh, you know, I would layer all kinds of fun things on front in the front. Some dangles. <laughs> We've got some fire polish rondelles in this like dark red to give a little, little bit more of that dark, darker tones you sometimes mm -hmm. can see in the mukite. Mm -hmm. That was one of my other favorites. That strand. Yeah. 
And then last couple. Oh, I missed. Wow, I just keep finding more. Yeah. We've got all of our <laughs> coins. We've got a couple of our mandala. Mandala, these were custom made for us in the yellow opal with the copper. I think they're so cute in the kind of boho feeling. Yes, yes, yes. And I love the I love the yellow that you use. It's not a it's not a scary yellow. Like this is a yellow people can work with. You know what I mean? It's it's and that it's, was that was intentional. We yeah. really tried to pick a yellow that felt real nice. Yeah. <laughs> For another focal, we went with the table cut, which is a specialty of the mm -hmm. Czech Republic, where they press the bead, they put that glorious gold finish on, and then they actually have this big old sanding stone that they rub on both sides. It takes a long time. Wow. So they cut away the glass, so you get to see that beautiful base mixed red glass. Yeah. And it still leaves the gold in the grooves, and also creates that window effect. So beautiful. I'm obsessed, there. <laughs> and I think the last one would be we did a custom seed bead mix. Um, I'm blanking on which type of seed bead we did. Oh, I've got the insert list right here. I don't want to say. Oh yeah, these, we did 11 ohm Yuki rounds. So this is a high quality Japanese seed bead, very uniform. And we of course picked out all the colors here, made this in house to go with the box. So pretty. And that, Perfect. And that is our November box, Sarah. It's gorgeous. It's gorgeous. I, I could not have asked for a better November box. It's just so pretty. It's perfect for this time of year. You can't go wrong with Mukai. It's just really, really a beautiful, beautiful box. Everything down to the metals. It's just, I love it. I really, really do. I was really excited to get this one. So I am a huge, huge fan. And all of the pieces that I've seen other people make are amazing. And that's yeah. what, I mean, that's, it's always like that with your boxes. Cause you know, you see like you put the, you do the hard part for us by putting the color palettes together mm -hmm. and it makes the jewelry that comes from it. Number one, super easy and always beautiful. Like they're, the pieces are always beautiful because it doesn't matter how you mix and match the pieces together, they work. And I think that's just kind of a testament to the the hard work and the and the the love that goes into you guys creating the boxes because it's very intentional that everything works together really, really well. So I yeah, love we it. want we want the what you get each month just to be like a total joy to get to work with. We've already done that yeah. work for you. I think this is one of the first boxes that Shira helped us on. I did. Because yeah. I remember picking out the hematite cubes with mm -hmm. Shira. We picked out some of the mukite. Um, so there's you guys, you guys will start to see some Shira touches on future boxes. She, she's been consulting because Rachel's the one who really leads the bead box. Mm -hmm. And then she brings Shira and I to consult on like yay or nay, yay or nay, like on yeah. hundreds of beads. And that's how we come to pick the ones for each box. So Shire's got good taste. So there's some you'll see some Shire touches in upcoming months. And ironically enough, none of the purples were my choice this month. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we already picked, we already picked the purples, so. <laughs> but, so just as a purple lover, what do you say? Oh, wait. <laughs> wait, here, I'll take it off. <laughs> uh oh, I've turned off the camera. I was finished. Oh, no, hold on. Come on, phone. Uh-oh. Okay, there we go. Oh, one second. <laughs> I don't think he can still hear us, probably. Okay. Testing, testing, I'll be back. We can hear you. You can hear me? What is going on? <laughs> <laughs> now you're gone completely. Just me. Hi. <laughs> All right, that was weird. That was really kind of much it was. Whoa. So this is oh, what I was doing at 3 a.m. I was squirting the mukite rounds into colors so that I can just pull the yellow and the topi oh. ones. That's just beautiful. I love the way you used that metal focal. That's awesome. You know, you really made it front and center. Yeah. I, it's, that's a very drapey necklace. I, I feel the Sarah Lovecraft uh, <laughs> emanating from it. <laughs> I love it. Purple. Love it. <laughs> My statement necklace is that nearby? It is right on the back right there. And then Sarah's got a, a whole project for us today. I do, I do. Let's see here. 
This one is the my first piece from the box, Sarah. Oh my gosh, I love that too. It was a remarkably easy technique, this this wire twist method. Isn't that fun? That's one of my favorite things to do. I don't do it very often, but I love doing that, the wire twist. Meredith calls that the pinch and twist. It's one of my favorites because it's, it's, it's so organic. It's so fun. Yeah, I'm obsessed. It was so easy. Just like I just got to keep adding beads, and then I had a necklace, and I was like, "Great!" Okay. <laughs> Finished off with some hematite and mukai. Call it a day. So pretty. So so pretty. Can we see what you came up with? So yeah, well, <laughs> kind of. You can kind of see. <laughs> So I'd actually taken most of it apart, but I'm going to show you because we're going to build this back up. Um, so we're going to create just a teardrop pendant here. And I think the one that I'm going to do today, I'm going to do a little bit different uh, just to kind of save some time. So I've used some um, 18 gauge uh, German style wire to create our teardrop shape. We'll do that together. And then for this one, I covered the entire piece in wrapped wire. I'm not going to do that today just because it takes a whole lot of time, but I did mm -hmm. want to show it to you because I do find that it adds a little bit more texture to your pieces to do that. And you always, you know, if you've got, you put something together and you're like, it just needs a little something extra. Sometimes that's all it takes is just kind of beefing up your, um, your focal a little bit by covering it in in coiled wire which can be really easy to do you i hand coiled all mine but if you've got like a wire coiler you could pre-coil it and then just slide it over um your 18 gauge wire and it mm -hmm. could and you know it doesn't doesn't take nearly as much time but if you just wanted to do a little extra texture that's always something fun to do but I'm going to do mine without today and I'm using like about four and a half inches of the 18 gauge wire to create our teardrop shape. However, you can always adjust that, make it uh, longer or shorter, depending on what you want to use yours for. I'm making a pendant out of mine, so I wanted it to be a little bit bigger, but not huge. And if you wanted to make earrings out of it, this size is still good for earrings. Uh, once I do add the extra bead to it, it does become a little bit more like a little large on the earring side. So you could always change out like your top bead for something smaller and you can always make your teardrop a little bit smaller as well. But Sarah, this I was- I match the box again. <laughs> I know, I don't know how that happens, okay? <laughs> Like you're pouring that bead. I'm like, did you bring that bead with you to the salon? <laughs> it's really weird how it happens. I don't know. It is not intentional. I promise. In fact, I need to go get my nails done because like they're growing out. So you know it wasn't that intentional, right? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, yeah. Okay, so we're gonna take our piece of wire and we're gonna put two loops on the ends. You can use your round nose pliers, you can use your bell making pliers. Whatever you want to do, you just want to try to make sure that both of your loops are pretty much the same size. So if you're going to use your round nose pliers, mark your pliers so that each loop is the same. And we're going to take some German style, right? On that one? Do what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. German style. Yeah, we have a good stock on German style wire because based, based on Sarah's recommendation, we, we carry it in a few different finishes and a good range of sizes. So if you ever need to restock your German style wire, definitely. Uh, you're, you're, the, you're the source, you're the source for sure. All right, so now I'm gonna use my artistic wire mandrel tool. However, you can use anything you've got on hand. So if you've got like, um, I use a, a lot of times I'll use like my bead containers or just anything you've got around that you can create a round shape with and I'm going to kind of center my wire up on whatever it is that I'm using. And then I'm going to bend around to create a teardrop shape, just like so. So you can you see this one's there. a little bit bigger, but it's, it's pretty much the same. All right, now I'm going to, I'm going to work hard in this before I connect my two ends together. So I'm going to bring in my block and my nylon hammer. And I'm just going to work hard in it a little bit just to keep that nice shape. Because once we start adding beads to the outside edge and holding on to it, we'll warm it up with our fingers. 
so I don't want to distort it too much. Sandy's asking, could you explain what makes a file wire different from say an artistic wire? Absolutely. So that is a really good question. And the difference is, is that German style wire is a medium tempered wire, meaning that it has a little bit more structure to it um, and it requires less work hardening. Whereas an artistic wire or your craft wires are dead soft wires, meaning that they are the most malleable, pliable and bendable. Um, and they are really, it's really kind of project specific as far mm -hmm. as, um, you know, what and where you're going to be using them. However, the medium temper of the German style wire makes it perfect for things like wrapped loops um, and, of course, components because it doesn't need nearly as much work hardening. Um, mm -hmm. If you use a dead soft wire, you definitely want to work harden it a lot more because it has that soft core to it. Um, but the German style wire, I always tell people, if you struggle with wrapped loops, it might be because of the wire that you're using. Right. Right. So some people are more comfortable with making their wrapped loops with artistic wire. Um, other people find that the German style wire is the is the secret to the success of the wrapped loops. So if you're one of those people who really struggles, it might be because you need to switch to the other wire. I found that people who have been using the artistic wire and their loops are just not coming out, the, the wraps are not coming out. Making that simple switch to the same gauge just in German style wire changes the entire game. And all of a sudden they're like, wow, it wasn't me, it was the wire. So yeah. Um, I really like working with it. Yeah, like, you've if you've never it used it before, wire. yeah. If you if you've not had a chance to use it, I definitely recommend giving it a try just to see because it does make it's like it can be a game changer in your confidence for sure. So definitely want to check that out if you've not ever used it before. All right, so with my little teardrop shape, you can see my loops are facing away from me i'm actually going to take one of those loops and i'm going to twist it with my pliers so that it is facing towards me so i just kind of twisted it i've got one loop facing towards me and one loop facing away from me i'm going to take the loop that's facing away from me i'm going to twist to open it like i would a jump ring and then i'm going to hook it over the other wire and then i'm going to twist to close it back my robot is back on my desk, if anybody is curious. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Sarah. Good morning. <laughs> All right. So now I've made my little teardrop shape here. And if you need to put it back on whatever mandrel you were using to, like, reshape it, you can. Um, we did work hard in it a little bit. So it is, it is going to keep that shape for the most part. But if you do want to kind of, like, open it up. A little bit if you don't want it as narrow you can you can really kind of adjust it with your fingers but you've got yourself a little teardrop that loop on the back is facing away from you so you don't really see it and then you've got the loop facing you towards the front now if you want to face that loop away from you as well you can and you can just use a jump ring here instead it's totally up to you i'm going to use a jump ring in addition to so uh totally up to you but you've got your little shape and if you want to work hard in it some more once you've gotten it into this shape which is a little bit more closed, you absolutely can. I love that. One is a German style wire was the Sarah's secret sauce. I needed to be able to make <laughs> wire wrapped loops. I'm telling you, it makes a big, big difference. Okay, so now with this one, with the one that I made ahead of time, Sorry, y'all. My cat was asleep on my bead mat earlier. <laughs> so, the one that I made in advance, at this point, this is where I would take like a piece of 24 gauge or 26 gauge wire. You use artistic wire, whichever one you want, uh, or German style, totally up to you. And I covered the entire thing, you can see. So the whole thing is covered in wire wraps. So I'm not going to do that with this one, but I did do that one. So if you're curious as to where in the process I did that, that would be your next step. Now, we're going to skip it for today, but that is what, this is where I would do that part. So in the original that I made, I used the hematite, but I was thinking you could yeah. also use these, the little, and Maybe so I, I think I want to use these today. 
I think Ooh. I do. I think I want to use these. So one of the other why are, why are so excited over, <laughs> over being, like, yes. We love English cuts. <laughs> we love English cuts. Yeah, I do too. They're so so pretty. So I also kind of sectioned this out. You don't have to section it out this way. You can see there's some little breaks. You can do the entire outside edge if you want to, or you can do it in sections if you want to. Totally up to you. But whichever you choose, you're going to need some 24 or some 26 gauge wire. I'm going to use some 24 gauge wire for mine. And I don't really have a measurement on that, but it's going to take at least, at least 20 inches. Um, if you're going to wrap the entire thing, you're going to need a lot more wire than that. But we're going to take our 24 gauge wire and we are going to anchor it to our component. So I'm just going to lay it across here. I'm going to take my short side and I'm going to anchor that with about three wire wraps. Okay. Then I'm going to slide that up to the top. Now it is going to kind of wiggle around on you for now and that's fine. All right, then I'm going to load this up with some of these beautiful English cut beads. And if you want to do it in sections, you're going to load it up with, let's see, for this one with the with the cubes, I use one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So there's six, seven, eight, nine. We're going to drop that down and you are going to lay these along the outer edge of your component, right? And then you would wire wrap to the component. With two or three wire wraps. And it is going to kind of look a little weird at first. And that's because we haven't gone back over it with some wire wraps yet. So it's going to look like that. Okay. Then you're going to make another section. So you're going to pick up another 9 or 10 or 11 or whatever. However many you want. We're going to start with 9 and see how it looks. All right. And then again, you're just going to kind of guide it around the outer edge of your component. Oh, I totally didn't notice in the original that it's not wrapped between each bead. It will be, but we don't do that until after we get the wire or after we get the beads on the outer edge first. It's just so interesting. I've never done the wrapping quite like this. So I'm learning new secrets today, Sarah. <laughs> All right. So I'm gonna wire wrap. Wanda, don't jinx it. Shh, Wanda. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. <laughs> Okay. Slide that over a little bit. Okay, and then I'm going to add another nine. So mine, my beads, so this time around my component is just a little bit bigger, so my beads are not quite, it's not quite enough. So I'm going to undo this and I'm going to add some more and I'm going to scoot everything over a little bit. Do you guys ever feel like you learn like a Sarah technique slash secret and then <laughs> your life? Like there's certain Sarah techniques where I like 
it's now just something I do all the time. <laughs> oh, I love that. Thank you. <laughs> the herringbone wrap around a coin. Yes. Oh, so pretty. Like there's certain techniques that have like really stuck for me that are so nice to have to like just eat nice go-tos that always often like often are like easy wins too. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Which is my favorite. Easy wins. Things that look complicated that aren't, those are my favorite things. Like look at my fancy jewelry, but I actually it didn't take me all day to make exactly. it. Exactly. Yes, yes, yes. All right, that is gonna be just what I needed. So I added an additional three beads to this bottom row. And now I'm gonna do another nine. Ooh, ooh, I today. Okay. <laughs> I think it's so many times. <laughs> Our mail carrier is very enthusiastic. <laughs> we have the best mail carrier. She's amazing. <laughs> we used to have to drop off all of our packages, Sarah, and now we actually have, we finally have someone who's willing to pick them up. That's awesome. <laughs> the chaos stress of finding an open <laughs> All right, and then I'm gonna wire wrap this little section. Okay, now let's see here, one more wrap. Getting some kinks in my wire here. Okay, so now that I have my little sections ready to go, don't cut off the rest of this wire because you're gonna need it. I'm going to trim off the tail here first. This little, the short one, not the long one. Don't cut the long one off yet. Cut the little short one. Okay, now I'm gonna go back the other direction. And this time when I go back, I'm going to go between each bead and around the component. So I'm going to kind of help this will help to secure everything, but it also creates just this really pretty wire wrap around. Yeah, I like the I like the look that it adds to the piece. It also seems like a simpler way to, to wrap on, maybe, because I'm used to just doing one wrap between a bead. Yeah. So this is a fun little technique that you can actually, if you go back the other direction, so we're just gonna do this once. However, we get all the way over to the other side of this. If you wanted to go back a second time, it creates a chevron between each one of your beads, like a little kind of a triangle shape. Um, so you can keep going back and forth as many times as you want to. We're just gonna do it one time, but if you want to change up the look of this, you can do that just by adding another another round of this wraps going in the opposite direction. And then when you get to your middle section, you just want to wrap around those again, like your little your little transition space here. And then keep going. So this is also gonna help to keep your beads stationary as well. So not only is it pretty interesting kind of look, it definitely helps to hold all those beads in place too. I was curious when you built a frame on this one, your decision to loop over itself versus like wire wrapping to itself. Right. How, did you, how do you decide something like that? Well, honestly, it's just the only reason that I did it today was just to show you a different way. Um, there's really, there wasn't really a definite reason for doing it other than just, you know, just to give you another option. Um, because there's so many different ways to, to connect a, a component like this. This was just one of the one of the possibilities. So yes, there are several other ways you can do it. Um, I was just using this one today. <laughs> 
for no reason other than just why not, you know? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So you're thinking this should go onto some leather? I, yeah, I think just a simple leather cord is going to be um, the way I go with this one, though you could bead an entire beautiful necklace around it if you wanted to. I mean, you've got tons of options. You could, you could use chain, but I do love leather this time of year. Uh, beautiful browns and kind of orange brown tones. Those are always kind of my favorites this time of year as far as leather. One day I'm here, I'm just playing with beads right now. <laughs> I had to shower all the beads from the live sale. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> all right. Then I'm just going to wire wrap this to finish it off. I really do. Th I, when you're saying when you said earrings for this, I really saw it quickly. I was like, oh yeah, yeah. that's that is such an earring. Yeah. I'm gonna do. So then you can really kind of just wiggle your beads, like the whole section, just to kind of place it exactly where you want it. But there you go. So there's the one with the um with the hematite cubes and there's one a little bit bigger with the english cut purple so either one of them i think are are really pretty and you can quite honestly do this technique with any little beads so all right so then i want to add to it so i'm going to add our um our coin bead up here to the top i'm going to cut Let's see here. I'm gonna cut another piece of 22. I do. I'm gonna I'm gonna cut a little piece of 22 gauge wire, and <clears throat> I'm gonna do a wrapped loop. So, cut myself a few little inches here. I'm gonna come down from the end of the wire, about an inch from the end. I'm gonna bend the wire. I'm gonna use my round nose pliers going up and over rotate and take the wire over to the other side. And I'm going to, I'm gonna wire wrap mine directly to this. So I'm just gonna take the tail end of that and just snap it right into there. So no jump ring connection here. There probably will be a jump ring on the other side of this, but for right this second, we're gonna wire wrap this directly. Hold on to that loop with my bent chain nose pliers. I, I like wire loop connections. I do too. Like, you just know nothing's going to happen. Exactly. Oh, yeah. All right, we're going to slide our coin down and then I'm going to do another wrapped loop on the top. It looks very finished too. I think like those, those little free coils have a very finished feel to me. Oh, yeah. up and over rotate take the wire over to the other side and then the wire wrap in that space and then i'm going to trim off the excess You got me inspired to start making a little bracelet, Sarah. Yay, I want to see. I want to see. <laughs> show me, show me, show me. Let's see. Okay, I'm literally so linking beads together here. Let's see if you can see this. I'm just, do I just started. So pretty. Bracelet, but I think it'll, I think it'll work out. That's so pretty. That's all I have so far, three beads. <laughs> I just love this one. So I, yeah, when I held it up, I was like, ooh, I think I need to do that something for myself with that one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it, like, glows. It looks magical. It, it's, it does feel magical. Mm -hmm. 
like, you're a wizard, Sam. What? <laughs> you're a wizard, Sam. Erd? Erd. A wizard. Oh, oh God. <laughs> I heard you're always Erd. <laughs> Who's Erd? We're making a nodded head. Wanda. <laughs> Vivian's asking if Jess is on vacation. Jess, are you, are you alive? <laughs> Jess is here. Don't worry. He's a, he's a multitasking man. I don't think I have any of the silver silk here with me right now, but the silver silk for this month is gorgeous. Mm -hmm. we came up with three. Like I'm commenting in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> we have three custom pipe chains we made with Nile, <clears throat> like a red one, a purple one, and like a what was the last one? He's <clears throat> red, purple, and what's the last combo? Is there gold? Gold. Bronze. <laughs> Why none of us remember? And we have three different that... colors. <laughs> Anyway, okay. definitely check out the silver stick items this month, y'all, because they are so cool. All right, guys. So to hang a dangle from this, I ju I'm just using a big jump ring. That is literally all. So again, this is another one of those things where there's a million ways to do it. But today, this is how we're doing it. <laughs> So I literally just took a large jump ring and I've gone through the loop here and added my dangle to it. I'll show you once I get the jump ring closed. But um, yes, there's other ways to do it. But today we're using a jump ring because, you know, it's always nice to have options. You can change out your dangle whenever you need to feel in something new. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. All right, so we added our little dangle to it. I still see earring, Sarah. Yep, that is a perfect earring. Perfect shoulder duster. Yep. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I would wear it as an earring. You guys know I would. I mean, I would wear it as an earring. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and then I'm just going to add a jump ring to the top and put it on a piece of leather because, I mean, that's easy and it's pretty. But you could do all kinds of things with it. Like they are saying, you can make earrings out of it. I, you know, why not? If someone wanted to make a smaller version for earrings, would they just need to use like a lower step on the mandrel, basically? Yeah, just a an, and a shorter piece of wire. Obviously, will do. Um, so maybe instead of the four and a half inches that I used, maybe three and a half would make a smaller. Um, and obviously it's going to take less beads to go around it and, you know, and just make it smaller. But yeah, you would use like, for me with the mandrel, unless I'm really set in what I'm doing, a lot of times I'll use more than one section to kind of get the shape that I want anyway. Um, but yeah, if you want to do smaller then you're probably going to want to stay like from the middle towards the top on your artistic wire mandrel tool. And I would probably kind of you know, go between two to get that perfect teardrop shape. Now, if I'm making a circle, I stick with just one. But when it comes to a teardrop, sometimes it's nice to start a little bit bigger and then squeeze it down a little bit smaller on the next step up um, mm -hmm. just to help get that that teardrop shape. But yeah, definitely a little bit smaller, whatever, whether it's this or, you know, something that you're just using on your desk. A little bit smaller than what I used would definitely make a smaller little teardrop and uses less beads so you'll have more for something else. <laughs> <laughs> but I still have a ton. So you can see like I went all the way around the pendant, but I still have leftovers. And it's the same with the with the cubes as well. So I went around the pendant, but I, I still have a lot to work with. So I, it's not like I used up all my beads, which means that I could make a pendant and the matching earrings if I just made them a little bit smaller. So, but that's it. That's the project. <laughs> Quick and easy. I just wanted to show off the pretty beads. You know, I, I didn't want to overcomplicate things. I feel like we've got so much going on this week as it is. I know lots of us are planning for family, already have family in and you know, sometimes you just want to sneak away and make something quick and easy. This is definitely one of those. Put it on a piece of leather, throw it over your head, and you're good to go. 
I think it's lovely. It's great. Yeah. What other ideas are you having with the box so far, Sarah? So I also like to, want to challenge you in our last seven minutes is like, can Sarah do earrings in seven minutes? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my fans can do earrings in seven minutes. You want to do an earring challenge? I think you should both do an earring challenge. Uh, let's let's do it. Let's do let's it. Do okay. It. Let's do it. I know. <laughs> Wait, wait, wait. Okay, let's put, let me put us side by side. Yeah. Let me change how the cameras are. Okay. Or I'll just keep this camera. Okay. On your mark. Ah! Get set. <laughs> oh. <No. laughs> All right, my coffee is in it. So oh I'm goodness. sticking with quick and easy. Uh oh. Uh. <laughs> you guys both hold the dahlias. <laughs> <laughs> um, this should be the point where I say no Dahlia coins can be used. <laughs> <laughs> she throws in the twist. <laughs> it's like chopped. <laughs> what other beads would I use? Let's see. Ooh, little leaves. They're so small. Oh, they are cute. Uh -oh. I, I don't have time to make this many decisions. I went 10 million of those little leaves. Ooh, okay. Oh, okay. that's pretty. That's pretty. Yeah, I'm going to switch to 22 gauge. I think this will work. Okay, I have my idea. Need lots of work for this one. Oh, I'm spilling beads, Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> Two minutes have elapsed. No. I want to give folks a bit. Actually, all right, you've got this. Okay, will you will you switch the cameras around so folks can see? Yeah. <laughs> All right, so we'll, we're just gonna go between. All right, yeah. I'm gonna make. Yeah. I can't even know. I can't, <laughs> I can't even get my feet out of the wire. Okay. I'm gonna do this all with one piece of wire. I think this will work. <laughs> Oh my God, this pressure is not what <laughs> Five minutes left. Shut up! <laughs> when Shara gets serious, she gets really serious. Me, serious and competitive? <laughs> no. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, those hematite cubes would be helpful. I love how quiet we are now. We're <laughs> <laughs> getting serious. <laughs> He's going to do it, Wanda. He will not finish them tomorrow. <laughs> I'm really trying okay? Everything's turning, okay. Just keep beating. Just keep beating. Ooh. Oh, you should, oh, we switched to Sarah. I want to see. Uh -huh. So many no, coils. Don't get distracted. So keep on going. But look at all the coils. <laughs> She's almost got one ear and done. <laughs> You can do it. I got this. You can do it. Kim says she has faith in you. Thank you, Kim. <laughs> <laughs> Sarah pushes me on camera. <laughs> it's a hard life. <laughs> I really beat in front of my face at all moments. Yeah, me too. <laughs> How many coils is too many? Not possible. Mm. Well, fiddlesticks. Okay, 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 okay. What? Here we go. Here we go. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Not a, nothing, not a thing. You just well, keep doing. Yes, that's not a thing. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, in my my rule is that the earring doesn't need uh, an ear wire. Ear, ear wire to be an earring. 
because now it can also be an ornament. Oh, okay. Or it could be a zipper pull. <laughs> <laughs> How much time do I have? Two minutes to make a second earring. What? Oh, I'm not oh, making the second oh, one. I'm only doing wait. one. You're only oh, getting one. one. Only one. Yeah, I actually do have an earring hooked next to me. We're just doing single earring challenge. Single earring because oh, I didn't have any ear wires, so I had to use. <laughs> Sarah's making her own ear wire. That's fancy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I have one. I have one earring. All right, here, here is my finished Ooh. earring. Oh, yours is so much prettier than mine. I love it. Wait, I want to see Sarah's. Mine's not. Mine's not all that pretty. Oh, wait, it's so cute. It's just. I feel like it's yours. Just... You have the one that can go with any pair of jeans. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Easy, easy to wear for sure. Oh, I think it's cute. I love the endless coils. That is so, yeah. so <laughs> my favorite right now. <laughs> All right. So between our between us, we made a pair of earrings, Sarah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> All right. All right. Hold on. I'm That's good. Good. <laughs> wow, that was that was a lot of pressure. Like one minute to spare. I know I could have. Yeah. Almost yeah. I know. That was a six-minute pair of earrings. So cute, so easy, mm. fun, easy. <laughs> oh my goodness, Sarah. <gasps> Woo! <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, because we need the Jeopardy music in the background of this challenge. <laughs> oh my so, goodness. So, remind us of all of the Sam things going on. Yes, of course. So let's see. It's a Tuesday. So we have do we do live sales twice a week at the shop, Tuesday and Thursday? So today is all about because we have it's this is not unintentional. We did beatbox this morning. We continue the beatbox celebrations later today at the live sale. So we have extras from the box, but the live sale is much more about just the extras from the box. We also have so much more that we mm -hmm. think pairs with pairs with it. So yeah. if you're looking for more mukai and other stones, I thought would pair nicely. Rachel always picks out some more check to go with the box. If you're a fan of those snake heads or the coins in the box, we probably have more colors coming for you. Um, definitely a lot to look forward to today. Oh, absolutely. Shara actually pulled out some some of today's. If I do, you want to see some of them, Sarah? Yes, yes, yes. Always. It always. looks like a heavy palette. It's it's a little heavy. Oh my goodness! Oh, that's so pretty. Oh, oh gosh, those roses, though. Oh my goodness, those are that's beautiful. Oh my Is it dark today? That's weird. So pretty. So yeah, I'm obsessed with these Mukai roses. Peach Moonstone, Yellow so Opal. Pretty. This is kyanite. All that is kyanite. Absolutely beautiful. It's got some oh my stuff goodness. Right. So just a little hint at what's coming. Mm. So pretty. Purple. I'm getting I'm getting excited for today's live session. I am so excited. So oh my goodness. Lot. Oh my gosh. These are <laughs> Honey. <laughs> Gosh, that. those are awesome. <laughs> wow. So just a little taste. That's at 5 o'clock Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern, if you are in the mood for some new beads for some mm -hmm. holiday creation. You could come find some really cool things today. Like Do beautiful. not miss. Do not miss the sale. Oh, my goodness. So who pretty. Here, I'm curious. Who here has the Sam's Bead Shop app? <laughs> What if we do a little put, we're going to do a little contest of we pick Ooh. someone who has the app in like an hour. Or actually, we'll do it tomorrow. So in case folks watch the replay of this, we'll pick someone tomorrow who has the app to get a $15 gift card to the show. <gasps> oh, wow. So the person tells us if you have the app or not. So if you download the Sam's Show app, make sure to log in with your existing account or create one if you're new. Um, and we'll pick someone to win a little gift card. So, we, well, this is now a giveaway giveaway nice. uh, stream Love as well. Nice. <laughs> Love that. 
You never, That's awesome. we, we, we like sprinkling free beads at the shop. If you come to the sales, you might just end up with some, some free beads. Jesse likes to sprinkle here and there. <laughs> That's too cool. <laughs> sprinkle bead credit. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> I didn't hear it until too late. <laughs> Jeff, what did you like? <laughs> oh my. Okay, well. <laughs> um, we're all about free beads. Um, <laughs> I, I should stop talking now. <laughs> oh, it's too we're good. We're too all good. about celebrating all of these beautiful colors and tones from the November box. Yes. Yes, Absolutely. Yes, yes. Sarah, what do you have coming up? So Hardwired will be meeting today at 4 p.m. for our weekly project. Um, but then that'll be the last that you see of me um, until December 5th. So I am, um, of course, this week, there will be, guys, don't, don't panic. There's not a Feel Good Friday show on Friday. However, there will be a big sale going on in my shop. I'm adding things to the shop. So be sure that you check out the shop because just because what's there now doesn't mean that there won't be new things there by Friday. So you definitely want to check out the shop for um, all of the fun things for the Black Friday sale on Friday. Even though there won't be a live, the shop will still be hopping. So definitely check that out. Um, and then next week, guys, I will be meeting with Hardwired on Monday. So that's between me and Hardwired and all of that. However, I won't be doing a regular live or a Feel Good Friday show next week because I will be in Eagle, Idaho with the Art Beads team. So Ooh. I won't be I won't be around next week. Um, I may do like an on location kind of live just to check in. But other than that. I won't be around next week, but then starting December 5th, everything goes right back to normal again. So um, just a, a quick little break in between there. Um, and it's it's all for the beady betterment of all of us. I'm not going on vacation or anything fun. I'm actually going on a work trip. So <laughs> it's it's not like I'm dipping to go, you know, ride roller coasters. I really am going to get beady goodness well, I, for everybody. So I hope Idaho is lovely. I'm afraid it's going to be very, very cold. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I'm going to hang out with uh, Becky Dahl and Julie Bean, and we're going to have uh, an interesting time. It's going to be my first time meeting them in person, so yeah. it's going to be pretty cool to get together with them and kind of have a team meeting and and make some plans. So looking forward to that. Becky and Tucson this year, yeah, I'm pretty sure I met Becky in Tucson earlier this year. She's lovely. Yeah. Yeah. I'm really looking forward to hanging out with them. So they, uh, they put us all in a, um, a B and B. So it, we're literally staying together for oh, the wow. week. So we're going to get to know each other quick. Fast, <laughs> right. It's going to be fun. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. We'll have a blast and I can't wait to, can't wait to see when you're back, Sarah. Yes, yes, yes. It'll be fun. It'll be fun. And of course our schedules will be different, of course, for Christmas coming up, but until then, you don't have to worry about any of that. Just know that I won't be around next week, but don't forget to check the shop on Friday because just because there's not a Feel Good Friday show does not mean that there are not good deals and sales going on in my Etsy shop. So be sure you check it out. Yeah, we are very excited for Black Friday this year. Like, I know. very excited. We've got a lot mm -hmm. We're going to be busy. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, I love Kim's comment. Thank you, S Squad. <laughs> I love that. I love that. S <laughs> Squad. <laughs> We need shirts. We need superhero yeah. shirts. <laughs> S squad. I love it. I love it. And it's three interlocking S's. Yes. Oh my gosh. We do. We have yeah. to have that. <laughs> well, with that, everyone, have a lovely rest of your week. And Sarah, yes. I'll see you. I'll see you soon, I hope. Yes, absolutely. I love you guys. Thank you, everybody. Hardwired. I'll see you later, the rest of you guys. Happy Thanksgiving. I'll see you soon. Happy Thanksgiving, Happy Thanksgiving. everyone. Bye. 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 <laughs>